Hey guys, this is my Education 202 Service Learning Reflection video, which basically covers my experiences and my reflections in my 30-hour journey of service learning in the Washoe County School District here in Reno, Nevada. Um, I chose two high schools, uh, Spanish Springs, for the reason that um, I attended here the four years, and I knew the staff a little bit personally better. And then uh, I also did some hours at Sparks High for the reason that I personally knew the instructor he invited me to uh, observe. Both schools relatively close by um, were really varied and different from each other. I thought it was really great to observe this because I got to see economic statuses within the school, Spanish Springs being upper middle and Sparks being uh, lower class. Diana Bartu, the Spanish teacher at Spanish Springs High School, took me in for me to observe her. Um, right away from the get-go, she gave me this really good advice that stuck to me. Um, she said that if you want to teach Spanish, you have to be passionate about it. You have to be passionate about spreading culture because, I mean, that's what it basically comes down to. It's, yes, spreading the language, but spreading the culture with it. She really recommended me the movie Stand and Deliver to watch it. I also recommend you guys to watch it. It's basically about, uh, based on a true story, Jaime Escalante um, takes a class of AP Calculus troubled students and he gets them the passion the AP calculus test through unconventional methods he teaches culture yet he makes sure that the students grasp the idea of math here's a little clip so we can understand the meaning minus 2 plus 2 equals 0 you just fill the holes did you know that neither the Greeks nor the Romans were capable of using the concept of 0 it was your ancestors the Mayas who first contemplated the 0 the absence of value true story you burros have math in your blood Seeing the movie and my and observing the teacher really did make me realize that teaching culture is a vital part of education to keep the students entertained. In the Spanish 1-2 class, a lot of the students have never been exposed to the Spanish language, so visual learning was heavily relied on. I thought this was really good and asked around if this was a good method of teaching. The students loved it because they could see it physically and put, you know, a Spanish letter to it, which was perfect for learning a new language. Um, I also really thought interesting, the classroom was beautiful, I mean, full of, 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 of color, full of culture. As you can see there, a skeleton is part of the Hispanic culture, so seeing that was really awesome. I also did some hours at Sparks High School with uh, the math teacher, Jose Piceno. Um, the biggest difference that I saw was the culture difference. And this school, right away, there was a lot of more Hispanic demographics. And um, the economic status also showed. Um, but I don't think this stopped um, Piceno. Uh, so it's my first day back from my first day at Sparks High School. Uh, with Jose Piceno. Um, he is the Algebra 1, 2, and then the Algebra 2 honors um, instructor over there. And um, the biggest thing that struck me was the fact how he accommodates to his Spanish-speaking students. Sparks High being a demographic heavily, heavily based on the Hispanic background, it was kind of a no-brainer that he needed to adapt to them. So he would teach like lectures in, in English, you know, the quadratic formula and such. And then, you know, as students uh, were working at it, he would personally go around to the students he knew that struggled in English and accommodated to them and helped them out in a way that I was, I was in awe, you know what I mean? And, and maybe it's because I've never seen it before. I was, I went to a high school, uh, primarily um, Caucasian, so I never got this, you know, that just didn't happen. Rather here, he would accommodate um, to those who struggled. And I think as instructors, that's something that we're gonna need to do is we're going to have students that struggle in certain languages or certain subjects or certain abilities. And um, as instructors who are more experienced, um, we should know how to accommodate. So um, I thought that was awesome. I, the other thing that I that stood out to me is we, I stayed for lunch there. And um, his room would just swarm with students, you know what I mean, coming in, primarily seniors, juniors. But, hey, how do I fill out this application? Hey, how does FAFSA work? Hey. And I was in awe, you know, because um, he's a Hispanic, short guy, um, real stern guy, but the students see themselves in him. They see that they can go to college, they can graduate, they can do the goals and mindsets that they set out to be. So that really inspired me, um, you know, to really think about being an educator and kind of paving the way. But yeah, seeing Bartu and Piceno in, in two different schools was amazing, uh, especially seeing that they're Hispanics themselves. I got to see a good idea and reflect on the way I would be as an instructor.
But yeah, I would just like to give a quick thank you to Dr. G, Miss Bartu, and Mr. Piceno for letting this all be possible. And all the kiddos that let me observe them, it was really all appreciated, guys.